When I'm not busy stalking the office with Skittles, I'm watching idiotic ramblings. Come on now. Well, good morning, guys. It is, uh, you can't see that watch because it, <laughs> it is 540 in the morning. And uh, we got up another 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, but it's okay. We got to build, uh, use my GoPro day because my other camera, I need to go through the SD card. But we got to build uh, a uh, permit book for Mick today. And I need to build two more permit books while I'm at it. We got two trucks coming next Friday. So I need to build three permit books today and I get three pre presses in the mail. But I wanted to show you, I'm looking for it, that's why I'm looking around. I want to show you um, the topic at hand why I don't like factory companies. Um, not all factory companies are evil, but for the most part, they are. So you guys bear with me and we will um, find that piece of paper. For demonstration purposes. Well, anyway, so yeah, big day today. I need to get the pre passes ordered, the permit books built. Um, New Mexico, New York, Kentucky uh, permits, fuel, you know, IPTA done. Uh, basically, New, New, New Mexico and uh, Kentucky just register. And then every quarter you go and do your taxes of what you rent to that state. New York cut requires a uh, a few dollars and a, you get a sticker in the mail. Um, so yeah, let me go find that paper and we'll get to the topic at hand this morning. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're going to want to learn this stuff. It's very valuable, um, worthless knowledge. Idiotic ramblings from the desk. Be right back. Okay, well, I couldn't find it. This is 8821. Um, this is the, the this is the tax authorization form that they send you. I was going to show you what that was, um, but anyway, so basically, factory companies, in my opinion, are like snakes in the grass. It's like high-end lawn sharks. Um, they're not all bad. But here's the way I view a factoring company. Uh, I'm not saying I probably won't go with a factoring company. I'm just saying I don't like a factoring company for several reasons. I was doing, um, you know, you got to shop around. It's like going out and buying a used car. You got to go shopping for that used car. Know the value of that used car. Know what your negotiating tools are. So here's some valuable knowledge for you when you go shopping for a factoring company. Um, you got to muddle through all the fine print. And the problem is they want to get you in the door and send you a docu-sign document. And you got to really dig to get into the contract. Uh, you don't get to really see the contract until you sign it. And the reason why is they, they you know, here, here's an example. So I found one of the better ones, uh, what I thought was better, was able to negotiate the rate to 2%. Um, so yeah, which is better than quick pay on most companies. Most companies you quick pay, uh, it's 3%. Some of them are 4%. Some, I don't, I don't go anything above the, the, the three. I, I've got one, one I do a 4% with, but that's because when I was brand new, a brand new entrant, I signed the, uh, carrier packet and, uh, and now any carrier packet I do, I do net thirties. Um, so, but, uh, so I was able to negotiate 2% flat fee all across the board, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, so we agreed on that, got to digging into the contracts, and um, I learned that it's 2% of 90% of, um, or whatever it is. So basically, they charge you 2%, they send you 90% of the invoice. The other 10% they, they hold uh, in what they call reserves until the freight bill is paid. And once the freight bill is paid, then they send you the, the, other, the remaining 
eight percent. So it's they said you, so two percent of nine percent. Um, well, so you get to anyway. It's confusing, right? So once the invoice is paid, they send you the other eight percent. The other two percent is theirs to keep uh, forever. So you still got to follow through and keep up with who's paid and who has it. Um, I'm like, well, if I'm going to do that, I'm, I'm going to continue my net 30s because I would be going factoring company just for the sole purpose of easing the burden upon myself. Because when I do net 30s, normally, you know, you got to do the invoice, you got to do the bill waiting, you got to do the rate con, and you send all that to the broker. And, uh, and then about 15 days in, I'll call them, say, hey, by the way, uh, just make sure you guys have everything you need, the bill laden looked good, invoice looked good, you have any questions? Um, usually the answer is no, everything looks great, we're good to go, a check will be cut on the second. Sweet. So the second I'll call them uh, on the second and say, hey, just touch your base, uh, get the check number, uh, you know, cut date, blah, blah. Oh yeah, checks in the mail, check number 154639, right? Well, so you're expecting it to come from Atlanta, Georgia to here, which is about two days. Uh, seven days later, it doesn't show up. So you call them and say, hey, where, where'd the check go? Oh, it, it, it got shipped out. Uh, you should get it any time. So the 30 days turns out to be 40. But anyway, so it becomes time consuming for just one truck uh, to keep track of all that billing. Uh, so if you got five trucks going or 10 trucks, you, you, you're going to invest pretty much a day or two days a month tracking. Um, and that's conservative. That's if everything fell on, on the first day of the month. Um, you would spend all day doing billing. So sometimes a factory company would, would come in and ease that burden, so to speak. Um, but anyway, so I successfully negotiated. I'm not going to call out the, uh, the factory company. Uh, I, I, I might in the comments section. I really don't know. Uh, we'll have to give that some thought. But uh, basically, I negotiated a flat 2% with uh, all across the board, straight cut. Uh, and then I learned the reserves. And I'm like, no, 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 man, I'm not, I'm not doing that, right? So then they backed out and they took the reserves out. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. So they take the reserves out. So okay, now we got 2% across the board, no reserves. I like it, okay? It's still a recourse. You know, you got non-recourse, non-recourse. That's a technical word. It doesn't really mean squat. Uh, it's outside of bankruptcy uh, on the broker or on the, on the shipper side. But anyway, um, so and most people you factor with have to have a good credit score to even factor them to begin with. So the odds of them going bankrupt is slim. Um, so anyway, so then they sent me the 8821. Uh, here's the main reason I don't like factor companies. All these blocks, all these little blocks were full, and I had another page, all the blocks were full. They had liens on everything. They put a lien on everything. House, cars, whatever you got, they put a lien on it. And I called and said, whoa, whoa, dude, what are you doing? Oh, that's just normal, normal standard. Uh, I said, well, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not stupid. You know, you can put a lien on the receivables, but that's it. Because that's all I'm selling you. I'm selling you my, my receivables, right? Uh, that's all I'm selling you. I'm not selling you my house, not selling you my truck, not selling you my firstborn kid. No use in you putting liens on that. You get you get a lien against the receivables, and we're done. Okay, they can do that. I said, look, we are done. That's the third snake in the grass that you've tried to do to me. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not doing the deal, not signing the deal. And Because uh, once you sign that and send it back, they own you, right? Uh, oh, yeah, and it was like a one-year contract. So... Uh, Everybody said, oh, well, there's always contracts, blah, blah, blah. And that's another thing. When you get in bed with a factoring company, you are in bed with that factory company. You can say you're hauling loads for Joe, your buddy Joe next door. You and your buddy Joe next door have been in business for a couple of years. And you're hauling Joe's um, car parts to, to, to Arizona back on, on a regular basis. And that's the only customer you do. Well, you decide, hey, I don't no longer need to factor uh, my buddy next door. Uh, I'm going to quit the factory company. Well, great. Um, you can haul, you can no longer haul freight for your buddy next door uh, and factor it 
the beetles through the factory kind of because they're going they're going to so until those until until your buddy next door pays all the bills through the factoring company, you're not released from that factoring company. So if you want to haul freight for your buddy next door, you going to find another method of payment um, because that factory company owns you and the buddy next door. So it's hard to get out of that contract. And and so if you don't haul your buddy's freight next door for 30, 60, 90 days, he gonna find the other buddy down the road to haul his freight because he needs his freight moved. He don't care about you. At the end of the day, it's business. <clears throat> so I just don't like factoring companies for all those reasons. Um, there's good factoring companies out there. <clears throat> not saying factoring is a bad thing, other than the fact that it's high interest. Even at 2%, <clears throat> the annual return at 2% is, 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 is mind-boggling. You could go to the bank and borrow uh, the same $20,000 from a bank, and the annual return would save you about 7000 a year. But um, the reason I would go with the factoring company would be for the sole purpose of ease of um, office uh, billing and paperwork if we do do that. So that's where we are with that. Uh, everybody want to know about factoring companies. I've been threatening to put a video out for a long time. Probably wasn't a very clear in-depth video. If it wasn't and you guys don't get the, didn't get the gist of it, well, just let me know and we will go more detail of the um, of the uh, factoring from that, but that's that's the gist of it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Idiotic Ramblings from the desk today. We're gonna go build some permanent books and get some uh, and get some pre passes on the way and a lot of other and a couple more EODs. You guys have a good one. See ya. Breaker breaker one nine. This is the Dominator with EJP Transport. When I'm not running up and down the highway. Loading and unloading my wagon, I'm watching Tim on Life is Good. Come on.